Hi everyone, it's Charlie Beach here. Today's the 22nd of May 2018 and yes, it's exactly one year since the Manchester Arena terrorist bombing in which 22 people, uh, including children, were killed. Um, you know, there's so many ideas and so many videos and so much propaganda being put out there. What can I add? Well, it's not so much what can I add, but in a way, what can I detract from what I see, what makes me uncomfortable on television? And rather than kind of poetically enter this, let's just get straight to it. We need to appreciate there's, well, there's many levels, but we'll call it the collective level and the kind of individual level um, at the moment. I think on a collective level, the government, the charities, the, the you know, the media, they're pushing this thing. Oh, don't look back in anger. They're all singing that, that good Oasis song, which each time I hear it associated with, you know, don't look back in anger with regards to your children being killed by fanatics, then it kind of ruins the song a bit for me. Uh, next point is, you know, since the terror attack, I mean, Manchester has always had a bee as its, you know, the insect, the bee as it's a kind of city symbol. The symbol, the mascot of the city of Manchester, and it's about, you know, working together collectively, industriousness, providing, you know, creating hives, you know, I guess, surviving winter. But again, also the bee, it's a, it's also a symbol of an unthinking, obedient drone that's infertile and the, worships a monarch, a queen, and does what it's told. And also, the bee, when you associate it with don't look back in anger, when a bee tries to defend itself, it dies. A bee can only do suicide attacks. And so when you're mourning or remembering a suicide attack, don't use the bee. And it's almost become a, like, in a way, similar to what the poppy is. And like, look, I support the poppy. I support remembering people who gave their lives in world wars so that we can enjoy the freedoms. You know, our great grandfathers in World War One, World War Two, um, dying so that I could have this free speech and be here in Great Britain and criticize all sorts of things without fear of the Gestapo arriving at the door and taking me away to a gulag or otherwise. Gestapo, Stasi, KGB, Venezuelan police services, you name it, you name the, the kind of craziness. So, you know, the B, the B, the B, again, it's everywhere. People getting tattoos of the B. The B is graffiti on buildings. People getting bees on the shoes. They're painting bees on their faces. Buildings, all the billboards, all, all the buildings, all the banks in the financial district. B, 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 we love Manchester. And it's, it's oppressive. Like, if you don't display a cartoon B, it means you want kids to be killed. And it's, again, it's this collective just... La, 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 let's create a narrative. Let's just push a kind of, we need to say something. So let's just say, don't look back in anger, show your B, go and sing in the church services and everything will be fine. Well, at the very same time that they're telling the, the mindless masses to, to kind of, you know, keep their heads down, carry on working, everything's fine. You've got MI5, MI6, the security services, the police, the army, the Navy, the Air Force. They're doing everything they can, allegedly, to, to stop this. And like you see in the newspapers every, every other day, people getting arrested for terror plots. They've had their houses bugged by MI5. There was, some, um, there was a young couple um, of British, Pakistani origin. They, they wanted to kill as many people as possible, and they got you know, caught because their house was bugged. So they're telling the public, don't look back in anger. Show the beeps. But then at the very same time, they're doing this massive covert campaign to, to catch all these fanatics. And like taking things into perspective, yeah, okay, we don't have that many terror attacks in the UK. More people die probably on an average weekend from fights in city centers on a Friday night and from car crashes on a Saturday morning than were killed in the last year in, uh, by terrorist attacks. But that's kind of missing the point. It's about context. Context. When you go out drinking and you aggressively push people around on a Friday night, you might get punched, you might get knocked out, you might get killed. That's what happens when you go out fighting on a Friday night. When you step into a metal box with a big engine and go driving at high speeds on a Saturday morning, you take a risk. You might die. It could kill you. But when you send your eight-year-old daughter with her friends to go to her first ever pop concert, 
in a European city centre in a kind of warm spring evening to go watch pop. Americana pop. The last thing you expect as a risk is for your little girl to be torn to shreds by shrapnel in a, in a suicide attack. And, you know, the, the youngest victim, her name is, was, her name is, you know, she'll live forever in our imaginations, our minds, our thoughts, our memories. Safi Roussos, the little uh, girl, eight years old. You know, this video of her dancing, getting all excited, going to her first concert. And if I could send a personal message, well, a public personal message to her father, Mr. Roussos, you are very strong. You've not uh, broken down in tears. You've remained very rational. You've remained very calm. And I, I've seen video of you. I've seen pictures of you carrying your daughter's coffin covered in roses. And uh, you're very strong. I, I wouldn't be strong like you. And my daughter looks a lot like your daughter. But here's the thing, you know, like, not to get emotional about these things. Um, you know, what are we willing to tolerate? You know, again, it comes back to context. I'll, I'll get in a car and I know there's a risk that it could crash and hurt me. Um, I'll go out drinking on a Friday night in Manchester city centre and I know that's not always the best for my health. I could get into a fight. But for everyday things like going to a pop concert, we need to ask ourselves a collective question like how many dead children in extreme decontextualized situations are we willing to accept every year to make sure that we have a diverse multicultural society and you know it's 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 fucking bizarre like if we go back to 1990 we go back to the mid 90s when there was the worst ever school shooting here in the united kingdom there was a crazed idiot called thomas hamilton and he took his uh, semi-automatic pistols into a little primary school in dunblane in scotland and he shot a lot of people. I think 16 little kids. Anyway, having a maniac execute 16 little children, probably, you know, one by one as they're screaming for their mummies and daddies, that affected the collective consciousness enough to the point where handguns were banned in the UK. And that was 22 years ago. We've not had a single school shooting since. We don't have these big gun massacres that are, you know, happen every five minutes in America. We don't have that. And this isn't about gun debate. This video is not to kind of get into the ins and outs of gun control. What I'm saying is the government saw an atrocity, saw a bunch of dead children, and they said, never again. We can actually legislate a way around this. Yet when it comes to people who are radical extremist Islamists, and there's thousands of them living in the UK, when they have their kind of quarterly, every three months, a mass atrocity, killing six, killing seven, blowing up 22 children, that, you know, we get, oh, just relax. It's peace and love. We can hug each other out of this. And like, okay, look, it's so hard to decipher whether there is something uniquely dangerous about Islam or whether it's just a kind of by chance that they're the second biggest religion, by chance that there's loads of oil by chance that we funded all the mujahideen and the kind of you know extremists it's by chance you know is it by chance you cannot decipher this it's almost as bad as the free will versus determinism debate but what i'm saying is like you know there's maybe 5000 10000 15000 on the extremist islamist watch list from our security services the british cia called mi5 mi6 and they're just allowed to walk around. You know, they're, they're just allowed to walk around cities, school playgrounds, parks, pop concerts. They get on the London Tube. They get on a crowded bus here in Manchester. And you, you go, what the fuck is going on? Like, I'm not racist. I'm not an ideologue. I, you know, I, I think everyone's an individual. And fundamentally, whether you follow Islam or Hinduism or Christianity... You are the be-all and end-all of your action, not some stupid, sorry, not a book. It's not a stupid book. Holy texts are important to people. So don't follow a book. Follow your heart. And that whole thing about is Islam unique? Well, it, it might be the only religion that has a, a war general who spread his religion by killing and conquest as their main guy, as their archetypal hero. 
I'm like, you know, it's so complicated. And in today's climate, you can't even talk about it because we've been, you're racist. You're, you're Islamophobic. And it's like, hold on a second. There is, you know, there's thousands of people in Britain right now looking to kill your children and my children. And the government says, yeah, okay, multiculturalism. Maybe if we give them some uh, free houses and the money, they will stop hating us. And look, to end this video, in memory of the 22 people and Safi Roussos, the youngest victim from the um, Manchester terror attack. Um, you know, you, there's nothing really to say. It's just, you just realize there's levels at which, you know, there's things which are to be consumed by the masses, there's things which are to be consumed by, you know, the kind of intelligentsia, the security services, and then there's reactionary, dangerous ideas which you're you're not allowed to have. But, you know, thank God for YouTube, we can get these ideas out there. But I um, just want to say thank you for watching. I just had to get this off my chest and all the best.